Hi painting people. This is part two of the easy swipe technique. In part one I did this painting here with a swipe and as it turned out I decided to leave this as it is but sometimes you stop sometimes you keep going. In this case I stopped on this one. I like it. I decided to leave it as is but I want to show you another painting where I kept going. This was also the swipe technique but it didn't start out that way. Um, I actually got a little pissed off when I did this. I was doing something, didn't like it, and I ended up swiping off most of the surface of what I worked on. And then I thought, well, while I'm at it, why don't I just keep going and see what happens? So I ended up doing, using this background and adding some elements to it to give it kind of a focal point. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna take the same colors that I used in this one and the same colors are actually in this one as well. So this one I stopped on, left it because I thought the cells were really nice. It's just kind of a fun bubbly look. I left this one alone. This is the part one from the part one video. And I'm going to do something a little more along these lines today. And this can help you rescue a, a bad painting. We've all done it, so let's see what happens. Like I said, I've got the, I'm using the same colors. I didn't even add, I didn't mix any more color. These all have a few drops of silicone in them, and I'm just going to do some random pouring right now. I didn't over plan this. We're just going to go. I'm not going to be neat or anything. See, I don't have a ton of paint. Usually you mix up a lot of paint in case you run out, but I'm not going to worry about it today because I want to illustrate the fact of something that you may not be happy with. You can keep going and hopefully rescue it. I'm going to tilt a little bit, see if I can get a little bit better coverage, but again, I'm not too worried about it. Now I'm going to use the white. I buy white paint by the gallon. It's so useful. And here I'm just letting it roll through. So, okay, we just have a a thing going here, nothing special. And I'm going to use the swipe technique. I'll take my big my big knife and I'm going to swipe. I'm just going to spread it around. Some of these colors will show and others will get obscured. I'm just going to fool around in this a little bit. So again, if you can imagine this is, say this is a painting you're not happy with, like I said, it happens to everybody. Just go ahead and try this technique. Say, okay, I'm going to push on through to the other side. I'm going to keep messing with this. This one's pretty active, meaning lots of cells. I'm tilting this, I'm letting this spread a little bit. It'll make the cells a little bit bigger. They're a bunch of tiny bubbly kind of things, kind of like the last one I did. But I'm gonna tilt it and see if I can get a little bit of a different look. See, you can, they're more elongated now. I'm gonna let a little bit of this run off. 
This is actually fairly interesting, the way it is. And now I'm going to look at it and I'm going to see what's kind of a focal point. This, this area here where the blue is against the white is kind of a nice focal point. I like my focal points, if I have one, to be in one of these four quadrants not in the center. So I'm going to I'm going to play with this a little bit more and I'm going to take some red paint and I'm going to do some lines here. Got some red. I've got some black. When I'm going to pour these lines, I like using a paper cup because I can point it a little better. Now I'm going to do some intersecting lines here. And then I'm going to take my little wooden stick, which is one of my favorite tools, and I'm going to drag some things around. Again, if you have a painting that you're not too happy with, just try some things like this and you may turn out to really love what happened. And if you don't, there's no, no real loss. But I find I learn things when I do this. It also gives a, a little more structure when you're pouring these, these intersecting lines. These pores quite often are, have a real organic look and which is fine but sometimes you might want to pursue c controlling it just a little bit more I'm going to put a little bit of white down a couple drops of black Drag it around, give it a little focal point. Now in a focal point, it's nice to have some color that doesn't show up in other places. I had some green in this painting, but I don't see it anywhere much. So since I have some left, I'm going to pour a little bit onto this focal point area. Now as you know when you get to the bottom of a cup you're trying to pour a line and it comes out in little dots. Here's something you can do. You can take your stick and connect it. Make some interesting shapes that way. See, this has sort of a little green sprout look, like something sprouting out of the ground. You've got this sort of earth tones down here. So overall, this painting is a little busy, but I wanted to show you this, this technique of, you know, again, if you want to just keep pushing through to the other side of a painting, try it, see what happens. This technique is experimental. This all of pore painting is a very experimental thing. So have some fun with it. Don't be afraid to add to something. Just because you poured it doesn't mean it has to stay. And just because you don't like it doesn't mean you can't keep going. Scraping, swiping, just keep going on something and you may discover a new technique. 
So it's a fun technique whether you do it pre-planned or as a last ditch effort to save a painting. And I hope you uh, this gives you some ideas for something you can do. My surviving paintings, they wind up on Instagram or in my Etsy store. So I hope you'll check it out and I hope this video helps you and we'll see you again next time.